Listen up, Maryland, presented by Dempsey's in Sportsland. And you already know who it is, Ryan Renner, Phil Vassar. And we have it all for you right here in Maryland, recapping every UConn Huskies game that we can. Ryan, let's go right into it. The Xavier Musketeers get crushed. They fall to 8-17 and 17 on the season. As the U- UConn Huskies uh, roll to a 89-35 win over Xavier, and the UConn Huskies improve to – 18 and five on the season. Um, the number, not number eight anymore, the number 10 Huskies. I was a little bit, a uh, little bit disturbed, maybe you want to call it, by a little bit maybe mad when I saw that they dropped down to, um, especially after what was that? Because that was just the beginning of, I think it was what, two weeks ago that they de- defeated Tennessee. So I guess you're right. That one defeat they had against um, who was that that they lost to? Uh, Villanova, yeah, they it was Villanova. So Villanova I guess you're right. Sleep, that, right. That, yeah, I guess you're right. That really hurt them in the rankings, and so yeah, I mean they did drop to ten. So Ryan, where do you want to start? I mean tonight it was obviously all about offense. Um, Xavier really, really never had any answers at all. Um, I think if again if UConn can uh, continue to dominate uh, games like this for the rest of the regular season, that is, they shouldn't have any problem wrapping up the conference. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, like we mentioned before, it's all games uh, in their conference left for UConn. Uh, and this, this is a huge win tonight. This is what we've, we've been used to seeing in the past with this UConn Huskies team. Uh, just nothing but blowouts, right? Uh, and it really hasn't been that uh, all, too often uh, this season so right. far. Uh, they've had a, a couple games like this, but it, it's been a little bit. Uh, and they, they they were able to go to Xavier t- tonight and uh, – get a, a pretty good pretty good win 54 point win uh but uh do and, and nelson adota came back tonight for the huskies and uh i think that that made a huge difference even though they did come off of the bench uh gino opted to go with the the same starting lineup that we've seen uh the past three games for uconn uh and it's worked pretty good right you know they they lost to villanova uh and, and gino put the the bigger lineup in with dorka uh, and Alaya Edwards, and they beat uh, Day Paul Marquette, and then tonight with Xavier, pretty, uh, you know, pretty good wins for this team. So uh, three game winning streak now for UConn. They're looking pretty good. Uh, yeah, and and a big win tonight. Big win that is right. And again, we see that uh, even the what is she a freshman? I believe Amari DeBerry got involved tonight. Is congratulations yeah. to her. She scored Ryan. Might be the first career points for her in college because um, I haven't seen her on the points list any of these games yet. Um, I apologize if I'm wrong there, but again, she scored five points. So again, this was a big, big team um, contribution in in tonight's win. I mean, you look at these scores. So who led in scoring? It looks like Kristen Williams. Am I looking at it right, Ryan? With 13 tonight. Right. Yeah. And and again, so we see this. We see this. Uh, th- this story evolved right in front of our eyes we we're witnessing i keep telling you when you get because you even said it when you only have six players <laughs> you're not I, you don't even think that they can make it that far in the postseason if they only play with six players it's almost like when once they spread the ball around and get almost everyone involved now don't forget about page beckers how could you forget about page beckers but when you spread the ball around i mean with this huskies roster it's just it's it's unreal what they can do. I mean, eighty nine points. How much more could you ask for? Yeah, and it's going to be really really important, like you just mentioned, going into March Madness when the tournament starts to to get this team fully healthy. Uh, but even if they don't have Paige Beckers, but you know we're all hoping she can come back right before the tournament. Um, even if they don't have Paige for the tournament, if they opt to keep her out for the rest of the season so she can return fully healthy and and, and get mm-hmm. ready for the next season. I, I think this UConn team will, will be pretty good uh, without her as long as they have Ducharme and Nelson Adota yeah. healthy uh, because, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good six. And, and when you can, uh, you know, build a, build a lead and, and Avina Westbrook to make up the seventh player. Uh, but, you know, you build a, a big lead like this, you get Gabriel and you get Dayberry in. Uh, off the bench, you know, so they are, they're able to get some minutes and uh, get some time on the court. But yeah, Avina Westbrook coming off the bench uh, tonight, got seven points, five rebounds, five assists, 
Uh, AZ Fudd, 11 points again tonight. Alaya Edwards had a pretty good game, 10 points from her. Uh, from her. Uh, mm-hmm. Dorka, four rebounds, four assists, five points. So, uh, yeah, you know, all around good, good shooting uh, again tonight for this Huskies team. Shot 63%. Uh, you know, that's pretty, pretty common for this team. We're starting to see above 50, 55 percent field goal percentage shooting uh, almost every single game. So you can always rely on UConn scoring at a pretty high rate. And we talked about how big their defense was last game against Marquette uh, to yeah. kind of finish off the Golden Eagles at the end of that game. Uh, Xavier, 35 points tonight. So they, they shut down uh, the Musketeers pretty good on defense tonight. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Indeed, because I think if you're head coach Gino, I think he pretty much uh, figured it was wrapped up. You never want to say game's over until it's over, but I think he was pretty much uh, – he was pretty comfortable at halftime, don't you think, uh, if you look at the numbers. I think that's why he got – even, you know, a lot of the bench players involved, uh, I'm I'm guessing, pretty early in this game. When you yeah. take a look at the at the sheet, uh, scoring sheet, I mean, a lot, a lot of players saw uh, – big minutes in this ball game. Hopefully it pays off as we're approaching March. Let's go over to Xavier scoring Ryan. And then we will, instead of predicting uh, Mondays, well, I mean, we can predict where UConn will fall Monday in the new rankings, but let's go ahead and go over. Um, what do you think Xavier did right? What do you think they did wrong? I mean, when you look at the scoring, it was uh, uh, Kasia Woods for Xavier. I mean, she led scores with 14 points. Uh, the next closest, it looks like, came uh, Michaela Scarlett. And we talked about her when we had our uh, pregame meeting, you and I at your house, before this game at the Centos Center, right? And I just think that uh, you know, more, more of these players, <laughs> they have to show up, you know, in, in big moments. And, I, again, I understand that's hard when you're playing uh, a UConn team that is, in my opinion, just as hungry – as if Paige Beckers would be on the court, even though she's not, because you know they're they're start. I feel like they're starting to hear a lot of noise from for, you know from national national media. Oh, they can't do it. They can't do it. I mean, I'm telling you, man. Once Beckers gets back on the floor, it it's it's gonna be pretty scary. Yeah, and and you know most teams by now I assume know how to guard her, but with her being out, uh, we could see a couple of things change from the the way they kind of pace the game for UConn. Uh, the way they run their offense, maybe building a couple of different plays uh, with these different players. Now you have Du Charm uh, and Nika Mule, Avina Westbrook. So, uh, you know, it, it might be tough for these teams to kind of figure out the Huskies come playoff time, yeah. uh, especially if they're able to get Beckers back. But Xavier only three and 13 in the, the Big East conference this season uh, shot 24 percent from the field. And, you know, it's a, it's a broken record at this point. We say this after every game. Uh, you know, in order to beat UConn, you have to usually score over 70 or 80 points and shooting 24 percent as a team is just not going to get it done against the Huskies. Uh, 0 for 5, uh, you know, from Courtney Pregner, uh, just not going to get it done from their starters. 2 for 10 for Calhoun, 1 of 4 from Beeler. So uh, 0 of 5 from Harris as well. So just just a really uh, tough shooting night for uh, mostly all the the Xavier uh, starters Townsend led the, led the starters with six points so uh, just you know just not going to get it done at all if you want to be, be, beat UConn for your uh, starter to you know no starters even got to, to double digits so uh, just really tough night for Xavier when you understand upsets are big you know everyone loves to see upsets especially if they don't like the opposing team but if you know me well enough Ryan if you've been watching this podcast long enough I, uh, Phil lo- likes to take a look at the top 10 at the top 10 in the standings all season long. It's all about top 10 for Phil. I mean, when you look at the standings here, we'll jump into the standings, South Carolina, you have Stanford, Louisville, North Carolina state at four, Indiana, Iowa state, Baylor, Arizona, Michigan, and then UConn right at 10, right at 10. Is it where I want them to be? No, but they're hanging on at number 10. Again, this has no meaning when it comes to March Madness, in my opinion. Uh, you know, obviously, South Carolina is the team to beat, in my opinion. But when you look at this, one Monday, these are games played uh, through games February 13th. So when I, when I tell you these standings, any chance at all that the um, committee <laughs> will be a little nicer than they were this past week and maybe 
UConn drops back uh, into that number eight hole. Yeah, yeah, I think they could find themselves uh, back up up a couple of spots. You know, they played Georgetown this Sunday uh, in a couple of days here. So assuming they're they're able to take care of business at home against Georgetown, I think UConn could probably move up a couple of spots to nine or eight. But uh, you know, I think they'll they'll probably stay in that range uh, unless you know a couple of teams ahead of them start you know losing games. Then UConn will just keep on uh, you know taking baby steps you know right up to the to the top again but uh, I think they you know they probably could find UConn you know looking at the schedule here uh, they only, UConn only has four games left Georgetown Marquette St. John's and Providence and then of course mm. you have the the Big East tournament uh, mm. for you know every conference has the tournament at the end of the season so uh, for UConn you know they could find themselves six or seven at the end of the season assuming the teams ahead of them start losing some games but uh, you know, see AP poll doesn't really matter when you get in the March Madness. All that matters is, you know, next team you're playing, you know, in the tournament. So, uh, you know, that's going to be the big storyline is, you know, UConn pretty much wraps up uh, this Big East Conference now, assuming they can win these next four games against their end conference opponents and then uh, take care of business in the Big East tournament and, you know, go into March Madness with a full head of steam. We'll leave it right there for this game recap. I promised everybody, and we're going to get to it, Ryan, tonight. That's why we're going to leave a little bit extra time, about five more minutes. Um, I, I promised everybody that we would get to the comments. We appreciate you all supporting us again as we cover the UConn Huskies women's basketball team this season um, and hopefully many more seasons to come, right, Ryan? Um, yeah. I promised everybody that we would go to straight to you, right, directly to Ryan Renner for the – unforgettable uh, game against Tennessee. Um, it looked like it was about 12 days ago, and we had a lot of people come through for that episode, Ryan. And again, we appreciate everybody. Ryan, I will go ahead and read you all these comments, and we will get started. It looks like it's 11 comments, so just keep your response brief if you can. Um, I understand sometimes that Ryan gets <laughs> fired up a little bit, but uh, – <laughs> Yeah, so again, to remind everybody, to remind Ryan Renner, this is the episode going back to Azzy Foot scores 25, UConn Husky stun, Tennessee Bowls 75-56 from February the 6th. Ryan, we'll get it started. First comment. This is Anthony Taylor. We appreciate Anthony commenting and supporting us. He goes, it wasn't a stun. Tennessee is poorly coached. Lost the last two games. Ranked too high. UConn ranked too high, too. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. Uh, big, big, uh, good point from Tennessee. You know, like I said, they lost three of the last four games. The Gators beat them. Uh, losing streak coming into UConn. And the, of course, UConn took care of business. Uh, you know, so I think Tennessee was ranked too high. But I disagree. I, I don't think that uh, the Huskies were ranked high enough. Uh, but, you know, have them at 10 now. Uh, so I, I think it's pretty fair to have UConn at 10 and we'll probably see him at nine or eight, uh, you know, in this upcoming poll. But uh, I think the Huskies are ranked just right. But I do agree that, that Tennessee was ranked uh, a little too high. OK, going on to the next comment. And that was by uh, Shorian, uh, his username, I guess his username, Shorian. Oh, we thank you for commenting. He goes. You think Coach A has anything to do with it? Laugh out loud. Well, of course. We always talk about <laughs> Coach Gino. So, yeah. I, I mean, I, I want to get to another comment and another episode that we have. But, yeah, uh, there was another uh, lady that mentioned about give credit to this coaching staff, how well they have came together and kept these girls' heads up. Because, like, when you – again, when Beckers went down, I mean, it seems like the, the air just went out of the arena. Yeah, I mean, it was just so disappointing for the whole entire team because that's the team leader. And when the team leader goes down, I mean, just, you know, it's so easy to just hang your head low and kind of just, you know, just float by the rest of the season. But, uh, you know, big up to Coach Coach Gino and, and the whole coaching staff for, uh, you know, getting the girls through this season with all the injuries and the COVID. They had a, a stoppage in the program for about two or three weeks there. So, uh, yeah, big up to the coaching staff so far this season. 
Wicket Mo 13. This one's for Ryan again. Wicket Mo 13 says AZ went off because her team handled business. Business. Okay, business. He put business. So her team handled business. Uh, technically, I think she has only played eight games. Question mark. Yeah, I mean that, that's probably right. Yeah, at that that point in the season against Tennessee. Uh, you know, of course, she got injured for about two weeks there with that shoulder injury, I believe. Uh, that's kind of the same time Beckers did. But, yeah, a uh, really career game from her. You know, she's really good three-point shooter. And, and the thing is with her, a freshman, so she's only going to con continue to get better and better with Ducharme uh, and Becker. So, uh, you know, only, only better things to come from, from AZ in the future. Michael Lawson, again, I remember this name. We appreciate you following us, Michael Lawson. Brian, he goes, uh, commented on that Tennessee video and goes, mule defense led from the end of the half to the beginning of the third quarter. So, Nika Mule, Nika Mule, we talk about her stepping up on defense. So, uh, Michael Lawson had, looks like he had all eyes on Mule playing defense. Yeah, and, and with Becker's out, she's kind of kind of turned into the team leader, bringing the ball up the floor, uh, up the court most of the time. Uh, and Nika, she usually doesn't take that many shots per game, but she's she's uh, stuffs the stat sheet, as we like to say, getting rebounds and assists, uh, steals, uh, you know, and she really, really does play really good defense for this UConn team. Uh, yeah. So, you know, even though she doesn't uh, get a lot of points, uh, that's not really what all, you know, basketball is really all about all the time. It's not all about all right. scoring. Uh, you we know, learned UConn, that from Michaela Daniels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did. It's really big. <laughs> Uh, to play defense, and that really shows down the stretch uh, at the end of the season. Next comment is from Brian Wilkinson. Brian, thanks for commenting. He goes, Ryan, never know who won't be able to play next game. If they are all okay, Paige with shine with her passing, I guess Paige will shine with her passing skills. She won't need to score. Okay, so, well, that's that's a good point, Ryan, because we talked about Paige returning once she returns, uh, you got to be careful because even you went as far as talking about her future professional career, wherever that is, in the United States, WNBA, overseas. Right. So you went as far as saying, don't push her too much. And maybe, just maybe, that she will contribute with rebounds, assist. Again, he's talking about passing the ball. So, yeah, maybe we should not be too concerned, you know, as far as Paige coming back. We may, you know, I never thought about that. That's a good point that he made. I mean, you and I might think, okay, Paige is back. That's it, Ryan. She's going to be putting 30 or 40 points up a game. <laughs> uh-uh. No. Play her and and play her smartly, right? right? Yeah, I mean, she and she really doesn't need to score 30 points a game, right, for this UConn team, uh, as long as she can get her right. teammates her going. Smart. Yeah. yeah, she, you know, her her teammates are really, really good as well. You know, this UConn team so deep. So she really doesn't have to score 20 or 30 points a game as long as she comes back healthy uh, and she's able to keep, to, to keep her stamina up, uh, being off so long from the court. So, uh, you know, it's also not, not all about uh, scoring for Paige Beckers either. Next comment is from, okay, so uh, Jay Paul. This he goes, uh, nice job, guys. So thanks, Jay Paul. We appreciate it. I don't know if Thank Ryan you, is yeah. safe for that one. He goes, nice job, guys. Okay. And then uh okay, this is actually this is getting into detail. I like these kind of comments. Thanks to uh Grobel. Grobel commented. Listen to this one, Ryan. UConn played one game last season on Fox and had two this year. This year's coverage was much better in that the studio people were actually women's basketball people, okay? Last year, they used their men's in-studio people that really had no idea about the players, the teams, et cetera. Hopefully, if Fox sees good ratings, they keep doing this and expand year over year. Hey, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not getting to which is better reporters, men, women, we're not. But, hey, I talked about it. They, they, I enjoyed it. I mean, they had I, – I wish – I'll have to go back and see if I can find her name now. i just shout out to her again. Um, she was a female reporter for Fox Sports. She was actually on the call with the male reporter that was calling the game. I'm telling you, Ryan, she I, – I don't know. Again, i have to find her name. I don't know if she was a former player in WNBA, NCAA. But, again, it's 
I think I think you enjoy it as much as I do when you watch these ball games. When you you take in, you you listen, right? You listen. A lot of people like to watch the games on mute. I don't know why. Um, but if you have some very important information to tell or some critical stats in the game, and that's what she did. So that's a good point uh, that Grobel made. Yeah, yeah. Like I mentioned before, I, I love watching the games on Fox, and they also had the game against Marquette on Fox as well. So, yeah, like you mentioned, I, I learn a lot as well from the announcers and watching the game. I uh, learn a lot that I, I didn't know before about UConn and and whatever team they're playing. So, uh, yeah, I agree. I hope they continue to broadcast UConn's games uh, on Fox whenever they can. And if I do recall that Tennessee game, I believe it was, it was the most viewed uh, or highest rated uh, UConn game on Fox ever. So uh, that's something big there. So that, that should tell yeah. uh, Fox Broadcasting something. Broad, that's right. Broadcast UConn. Yeah, We're that's right. right yeah. now, right? All right, and then the last one. This is that. This is it. Then we'll go out with a bang. This is a good one for the finale right here. So Brian Wilkinson commented again just hours later, it looked like uh, that night, and he goes, got some lady coaches shaking now. They played a great game without Beckers and Ducharme. Wow, what a showing, Ryan Renner. I agree. Yeah, what a showing. Uh, you know, that was a big win against Tennessee. Uh, you know, they lost to Oregon. Uh, you know, Notre Dame, uh, and, you know, we really saw them struggle against South Carolina as well. Uh, I'm still disappointed that game got canceled against South Carolina. We didn't get to see that rematch. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to see the rematch in, in March Madness because that, that'll be a good one, especially if they're able to get Paige Beckers back. Uh, I'm sure all the UConn fans are hoping for that rematch in March Madness. But, uh, yeah, I agree. That was a huge win against Tennessee and Hopefully on uh, UConn can finish off Georgetown uh, on Sunday uh, and finish off the rest of the season strong. Hey, very quickly before we head out, uh, shout out to Dempsey's man. Dempsey's girl. I know I was down there for the second time in six months and it's just, man, it's always uh, so warming, right? So warm to go in there. And uh, I know your dad, man, he, he enjoys having breakfast there every weekend. And if you all live in the area and have not stopped down there, yet, that's a must, uh, must stop uh restaurant right there i mean ryan what do they have they have of course i'm a maryland boy right so i i love the crabby burgers i mean they have everything from you work there they have everything from uh, burgers from a uh, breakfast so again uh shout out to maddie and the, and the crew down there because i tell you they they know how to cook yeah yeah big up dempsey's uh you know <laughs> we got it all down there so you know if you're around the area here uh give give us a try and you'll, you'll probably see me down there as well that's it, Ryan. Again, it's a final today. Connecticut defeats Xavier 89-35. Stand by, y'all, for the rankings as they get revealed on Monday. Ryan, next stop, actually not a next stop, uh, after a two-game road trip, Connecticut returns home. Ryan, number 10, Connecticut to face Georgetown Sunday, February 20th. We'll have that recap for you and all the UConn news right here on Listen Up, 2 o'clock on Sunday. Ryan, I'm out.